everybody. Welcome to Cake Tasta Cakes. It's Jen. I'm going to show you how to make a Baby Jack Skellington and all these decorations out of gum paste. Okay, before we begin, just like always, if there's any tools or supplies you see me using that you could use yourself, if you check the link in the description below, it should be able to help you out. All right, I am going to start by making a Baby Jack Skellington. I get a lot of requests for Nightmare Before Christmas and uh, it's fun to do a little variations or something a little more creative with it. So here we go. All right, I started with that piece of black gum paste as you see there. And you see how I kind of gave it a bit of a pear shape and then cut off the top and bottom so the top and bottom are flat. Rammed it through with a lollipop stick and stuck it in a piece of styrofoam. This is what I'm gonna work on. It'll support the weight and everything. So it's really nice if you do this kind of stuff, I recommend getting yourself some styrofoam. I'm using my veining tool there to press down kind of like a letter V, a triangle in the center of the chest there. That's where the white is going to go of the shirt. I'm going to have basically like a white shirt underneath and then the black dress jacket and pants on top. And you can see in the picture at the corner there what we're going to be ending up with when we're all done. So for now though, I use my knife as you saw, and now I'm going back over it with my veining tool to separate a line between the top and the bottom. This is going to give me a, a separation between the pants and the shirt of my little baby Jack. And I know Jack is really skinny, but my baby's chubby. <laughs> I made I made a chubby baby Jack. I thought he looked better this way, a little more chunky, a little more chunky, a little more baby this way. Uh, okay, and now I am going to add his legs. I've got two little pieces of round gum paste. Again, just still using the black and I'm flattening off the two sides, as you can see, kind of making them look like, mm, I don't know, like Rolos or, or what is that licorice candy? You know, what that's black licorice that comes in the pellets like that. That's what it kind of reminds me of. But those are gonna be the legs. I'm keeping them nice and short and I'm holding them in place with a piece of dried spaghetti. I went ahead and got myself a triangle of white gum paste and I'm gonna fill in the top part of the shirt. And if you're not familiar with my videos, you're gonna learn real quick that I jump all over the place. So even though we were doing the legs a second ago, we're back to the shirt and the chest right now. So I put the white piece in, flattened it out, and now I'm going to the white again. Rolled out really, really thin. This is still white gum paste, and I'm cutting out really skinny little stripes, and I'm going to start pinstriping his suit. I'm using water to connect the stripes to the suit. I'm just not showing it to you because it's repetitive and monotonous and boring. And I'm going to add stripes to the shirt, to the pants, each pant leg is going to get one, to the pants itself, and eventually you're gonna see I'm gonna add a collar and then it will go on there as well. Okay, this is going to be the collar. I rolled out my black pretty darn thin, I gotta say, make myself a banana out of it. And I'm gonna wrap it around, as you see, it's going to follow down to the bottom of the collar, or excuse me, the shirt there. So he's got kind of his open front there. I'm gonna mark off with my knife blade where it will um, come together to form a nice little point. Trim off the extra, and then I'm going to add water, which again, I didn't show you, cause it was boring, to the outline of that flat part there of the shirt, and press it down and into place. So that way you can see he's all covered in stripes, I added three little buttons. Those are just little balls of gum paste I pressed into place. And now he's got his collar. These black balls, they're kind of more oval than completely circular. Those are gonna become Baby Jack's shoes. I'm using my knife blade to just make an indentation around toward the bottom of one of them, or of each of them, but on one side. So that way it kind of looks like now he's got little soles on his shoes. So they're more baby booty-ish and not just big black balls at the end of his legs. I'm gonna leave those completely black though. These little kind of cylinder things, I'm tapering at one end, you can see. I'm trying to make it smaller at one end and then bigger at the other. And I cut it off flat at the big end, are gonna become his arms. Um, they're, you know, not real long or anything. We're keeping them pretty short and stocky. But you can see how it tapers up and kind of goes up and into his shoulders. So we're gonna add the arms in a moment, or excuse me, the hands in a moment. But for now, putting the arms in place, making a match up, and then here we go with those stripes again, yay. Let me tell you, I spent so long cutting stripes and putting stripes on this figure. It took forever and it was boring, but it came out really cute. So if you are willing to put in the time, you know, put the TV on while you do this and then you can get it done and it's not so bad. Okay, once you get all those stripes on, just trim off the extra where it overhangs anywhere you see. 
And then you get to stripe up the collar. Yay. It's like the stripes never end. They just keep on coming. It's, it's the gift that keeps on giving. All right. So as, as you can see, crazy edit there. All the stripes are done on the collar. Now I'm adding the hands. I took a ball of white, just rolled the back of my knife blade against it to kind of make indentations to give the idea of little finger separations and called it good. I'm not making fancy fingers here. We're not doing individual little bones or anything like that. He's just got a fat little chubby mitt of a hand. That uh, excuse me, purple ball I made is going to become a rattle. I took the purple ball and now I put a small gray stripe around it just for decoration, just to make it look more interesting. Tried to keep it round because pressing on it does change the shape of things. And I have a little piece of dried spaghetti. I'm putting some more gray on that. That's gonna become the handle of the rattle. So I wanted it to stay skinny. So as you can see, I pinched off the gray, extra gray to one side, then trimmed it. And then just did my best to press it all into place. Once I had it looking good, I stick the ball on top. You make sure you don't go through the top of the ball with a piece of spaghetti. Trim off any extra so you have just a little nib of spaghetti sticking out the bottom. Add a little water. I put another ball of purple on the bottom. Kind of just smushed it into place once again. Did the best I could. It was kind of hard because this was awkward to work with. But once it was all done, put a little water on it and I put it up into the crook of his one arm, kind of up against his belly. Now I'm going to take another ball of the white gum paste and I used my uh, knife again to make the little finger imprints you can see. You can see them showing there. And I'm just pressing that hand so it holds onto the handle of the rattle and kind of goes into the bottom of the sleeve, trying to make it all come together to make just this one harmonious little baby holding onto a rattle image. All right, we're going back to our black gum paste one more time because we love it so much. We're never giving it up. I'm going to show you how to make his little bow right now. You're going to flare it out so it's tapered in the center, kind of like a triangle on each side, but meeting in the middle where it's skinniest. I use my circles, as you saw, to make a cut, two cuts on each side to kind of create a bat wing effect. Once again, with those white stripes, I told you they just kept on coming. <laughs> You're going to add a stripe to each of your point from the center, so there's three on each side. And right now you're like, hey, there's a little bat head sitting there. You didn't show me how to do that. Yeah, I know. I ended up um, throwing that one away. I'm going to show you in a moment how to make it. So don't worry. Pretend that one doesn't exist. Let's focus on that white ball I'm doing right now. That is going to become Baby Jack's head. So I got a nice round white ball of gum paste. I'm using my ball tool to hollow and lift to create two eye sockets. That also kind of helped create eyebrows as well. I'm using whatever that tool is right there to poke two little nostril holes into his head. I put them up high in between his eyes to try to make it look a little bit more baby-ish. I'm adding a little tiny dot of black gum paste into each hole because it made it stand out better, made it look a little better, made it look a little more jackish, I guess you could say. And then a ball of black gum paste into each eye socket. I'm using the ball tool again to press it down and in. And I'm not filling up the hole I'm just lining the hole. So I have a smaller ball and I press it in. You can see I'm kind of grinding it around and that makes it spread out and cover the entire inside of the socket. Now I'm using a little bit of water on top of each eyebrow ridge and a very thin piece of gum paste that I rolled out real skinny and following it along the curve of the ridge, he's got now two cute little eyebrows that just kind of float there nicely. All right, I have now pressed that winged bow tie down over the post of his neck with that lollipop stick, ram the head on as you see there. And now I'm going to show you how to make that head for the bat. You remember I said pretend that one didn't exist. Now it can exist. I started with a triangle shape of black gum paste. I used a small circle to cut off the top of the fat part. So now he's got kind of like little devil horns. I use my veining tool to press two little indentations kind of in kind of oval shape, but just kind of long. And I'm filling those in with white gum paste. And that just creates a nice little bat head, you see? And you just tuck it in the front there, a little bit of water. The ears will tuck up under his head. Nice and cute and tight and good. I'm using my food coloring marker. This is a black one to draw a face on him. I am going very carefully, very slowly. This video is sped up and you can see I'm kind of going nice and slow in it right now. I was going real careful. I had to trace it a couple times to get it dark enough. And I made it nice and long so it goes out past each eye and then little cross hatches to make his teeth, I guess, his stitches. And there you go. Now I'm going to show you how to make the little pacifier. I have some purple there that I shaped into an oval, pressed down in the top in the center. 
And then I'm taking a little swizzle straw that I got from somewhere to cut out two holes, one on each side. So now it kind of has almost a heart shape, sort of, you know, with the two holes, like a pacifier will. A little ball of gray in the center. And it really looks like he's got a little pacifier. <laughs> like, it was super easy and very cute. Okay, I'm going to show you now how he made the blanket he's sitting on. This is some purple gum paste. I rolled it out pretty thin, and then I took a bounty paper towel and rolled it out on top. And what I didn't realize is the bounty was there, so I made a bounty print. So now my blanket said bounty on it. So I had to re-roll it carefully, making sure that the word bounty did not transfer and just the flowery, stitchy pattern transferred. So if you're using high-quality name brand equipment like I do, of course, make sure you don't accidentally transfer the word onto your gum paste. As you can see there on each end, I just chop, chop, chopped up to rough up the edge, make it look a little like it's got some fringe using my stitching tool there just to make a pattern around it, make it look a little bit more like fabric. I'm going to put it back onto my styrofoam and I'm going to place him more toward the back of it. I'm not going to place him smack dab in the center because he wouldn't look right. You know, I've got some other stuff coming too that I need to have the room for. So I moved him to the back, let it dry, put it aside, let it dry. Okay, I've got gray here, just gray gum paste that I'm cutting into cubes. I measured how thick I had rolled it out. It turned out to be three quarters of an inch thick. And so I'm measuring three quarters of an inch along my bricks there. And I'm cutting them three quarters of an inch. So in theory, they are nice, perfect little cubes. In practice, of course, it's gum paste, so it mushes and it gives and it moves a little. Not so perfect, but it's okay. We're, we're doing the best we can. This part was a lot like the stripes on Baby Jack's suit. I'm taking very thinly rolled purple gum paste and I'm outlining the edges of the blocks to give it that traditional old-fashioned wooden block look, how it has the painted edges around all the corners. Oh my gosh, you know, this, this whole project taught me lessons in patience that I, I never knew I had to learn, but apparently I did. Because once again, I put on a good movie and I edged blocks. I rolled out that piece, as you see, that long, thin piece, rectangular piece of gum paste, wrapped it around. So half of it was covering the brick and half of it was sticking out. And then I folded the part that was sticking out over. So I kind of just made a frame. So you can see it here. I'm going to fold, I'm going to cover half of the brick, the other half sticking out in the air. But I'm going, you can see I added a little water to it. You need a lot of water because it just was having a hard time sticking. So be generous with the water, place it on so you can then fold it in half and fold it over. There you go, you see? Now just do this like a bajillion more times and don't lose your mind and don't let your gum paste dry out and you will have lovely little blocks all covered up. Because this was so tedious and so repetitive and so monotonous and so uh, testing my patience, I ended up doing all of the sides except for the bottom in the back. Um, so there was literally one, one side I didn't do. I guess I really could have just finished it, but I didn't. I didn't, darn it. And it made me feel better because I figured it's going to be against the cake. No one's going to see it. It helped preserve my sanity, so I skipped it. But once I had my blocks all done, put them aside, let them dry. All right, now I'm going to show you how I made the baby bottle. This is some white gum paste. Roll it into a perfect cylinder because everything I do is perfect. And then I'm going to flatten off the top and the bottom as best I can without losing any of that perfection I achieved earlier. As you can see, not quite so perfect anymore, but you know, whatever. I took a ball of gum paste that is purple in color, flattened it to make just a disc out of it, like a cookie or a biscuit. I am using my knife to make little ridges all around the edges and then I'm going to plop it on top. Actually, I'm going to place it very carefully, not really plop it. But I am going to place it then on top of my baby bottle. You got to make sure too that your little purple bo uh, top there sticks out just past the edge of the white because it's, you know, the screw on ring that the bottles have. So it should stick out a little bit. This gray piece that I'm working on is going to become the nipple of the bottle. I have it flared out at the bottom as you can see. I'm trying to use the handle, I think, of my paintbrush to taper it in and then have a little ball at the top to make it more look like, you know, the cartoony bottle, traditional bottle that we are all so familiar with. And stick it on with a little bit of water. There you go. Press it into place. Don't lose that effect. Put a little dot on the top. And there you go. Baby bottle, right? 
Now I am going back to my brick or my blocks because they had time to sit. And I'm just going to show you real quick that I put the child's name in them on, with letters. I had taken some of the purple, rolled it out real thin, cut out real skinny little pieces, and then painted water onto the block and then placed the letters on and just twisted it around as I needed to make it fit. I just made sure that the letters didn't touch any of the edges so that way you could read it nice and clear. Okay. Now we're going to, I'm going to show you real quick this little plaque. All I did to make this was take some white gum paste and a template that I found online. I just printed it, cut it out, traced it, and I let it dry on a curve. I used my cake pans that I'm going to use. I just laid it over a couple of them and let it sit for a day and then it hardened with the curve. So now when the person receives it, it will follow the curve of the cake and it'll stick right to it and they won't end up breaking it because once this stuff dries, there's no bending it without breaking it. Please don't do it. <laughs> don't try to force it. I outlined it in some purple, as you can see, and I'm going to show you real quick just some of the lettering I did. I took some black gum paste. I'm using my fondant roller to roll it really long and thin, and once I had a good long piece, I just twisted and shaped it into some letters. Uh, the message said, Welcome Little Nightmare, so that not that cute? And so I just made all the letters for the words and I had to make sure that they would fit on the plaque. So make sure if you're going to do something like this that you don't make it too big. Try to keep your gum paste nice and thin. It was starting to get a little fat there at the end, that letter M. Once you have all your letters and everything, then using water, press it into place. Start with the middle of your words and then work out to the sides. It'll work a lot better that way. Okay, and last step, I am going back to my bottle because I had to let it sit for a bit put some lines on it with my food coloring marker. And there you go. You got baby Jack, a blanket, some toys, blocks, and he looks great. So thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe because that does help me out. Please check out my many other videos out there as well as other Nightmare Before Christmas characters. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.